Over the last several weeks, we've seen multiple protests break out all over the U.S. Some peaceful, some not so much. But one incident in particular last weekend caught my eye. Anarchists wearing black clothing and masks attacked supporters of President Trump during a demonstration in Berkeley, California Sunday. Six people were injured and 13 arrested. Damn it, Berkeley, another fight? There's so much violence breaking out in Berkeley. They should start offering a degree in ass whooping. That's what they need to do. <laughs> oh no, I'm late for my headlocking 101 class. My professor's gonna kill me. Unless I kill him first. <laughs> Time to earn that A, baby. Mm -mm. <laughs> So, another peaceful protest interrupted by violence. Uh, the question is, who are these black-clad mystery fighters coming for the alt-right? The antagonists of the alt-right are really a loose-knit group of activists okay, who prefer yeah, yeah, to be called fascist. the Antifa movement, short for anti-fascist. Oh, anti-fascist, Antifa. First of all, that's a great name. It's short, it's punchy, excuse the pun, and most importantly, <laughs> you don't have to know how to spell fascist. I like that. <laughs> yeah. No, which, I mean, I don't need, because it's super easy. It's like P-H-Y... You get it. You know what I mean. Anyway, so, so, so we know who they are. The question is, what is Antifa all about? And that's the first problem, because Antifa has no defined leadership. There's no clear way to know what they're actually meant to do, and not do, for that matter. So, for instance, uh, some Antifa members say that their purpose is to make life difficult for Nazis and white supremacists. Why hunt these people down? Like, what is your goal, to expose them? Exactly, because no one's paying attention to them, and sooner or later, they're gonna be your police officers, they're gonna be your politicians, they're gonna be your teachers, they are gonna be people that you cannot touch. And I don't want that to happen. Now, that sounds awesome, right? This guy's basically working to expose them by doxing them online. Uh, this guy's doing for society what women do for their best friends. You know, it's like, girl, I know he seems normal, but there's something you should know about him. <laughs> He's a Nazi who never calls back when he says he will. <laughs> so that's what some members of Antifa do, expose Nazis and racists. Basically, it's internet shaming. You know, the thing that people thought they would do to Kim Kardashian, and then she became a superstar. For other members, <laughs> the movement is more about friendship and fun. Bob and Tom are friends. They both like obscure Japanese video games, anime, and punk music. But over the past six months, they've had something new to bond over. Bob and Tom are now Antifa. Is this all fascist, right? Uh, I think there's an us in there. Like how much of this is just sort of like an online cosplay? You know, I feel like uh, there is a pretty strong element of that. The alt-right, they try and say anime and Japanese video games belong to them. That's not true. Wrong to everybody. I, I'm not gonna lie. On my list of complaints of the alt rights, <laughs> them trying to own Japanese video games is, uh, let's say, not uh, on my list. <laughs> like, honestly, I'd be happy to trade. I think America would be happy to trade as well. America gets diversity, and then the alt-right gets Tekken. That seems like a fair trade to me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm taking Eddie. I always play as Eddie. I'm Eddie. I'm Eddie. <laughs> so that's some of the people, right? They just want the video game. And then, and then some of Antifa say they just want to burn it all down. The world got a glimpse of these tactics in action when some clad all in black smashed the windows of a Starbucks in a Bank of America. Just blocks away, some members of Lacey McCauley's Antifa group, Disrupt J20, swung into action, torching a limousine and scuffling with police. Breaking a window is a symbolic act. Windows break all the time, things break all the time. Yeah, especially when you throw rocks through them. <laughs> That's someone who clearly doesn't have a black grandmother. Like, if I ever tried that <laughs> with my grandma, she would Antifa my ass. <laughs> uh, grandma, things break all the time. And she'd be like, and you're about to be one of them, huh? <laughs> you're about to be one of them. <laughs> yeah, but, but seriously, though, like, breaking a window was a symbolic act? Like, you might think it's some deep statement, but most people see that and think, great, now I've got to walk a whole block up to the next Starbucks. Like, who is that supposed to convince? What are you trying to do? It definitely doesn't convince the Starbucks guy. Uh, the person who's gonna be in the store cleaning up the glass saying, yeah, they made a good point about fascism. I understand what they mean. I understand it. No, they don't think like that. Uh, you know, and you've got these Antifa members who believe that smashing is all they should do. Uh, others want to expose neo-Nazis, uh, and part of Antifa has only been about video games. But the part 
that's been causing the most headaches is the one that's hitting people in the head. Antifa is any group that's willing to stand up against fascists by any means necessary. They're not afraid to play rough. What happened? I was walking on the street and this guy like sucker punched me in the back of the head. You see, now, here, here's the real problem. It doesn't matter what your noble goal may be. It doesn't matter what you say you're fighting for. When people see that, all they think is, oh, it's vegan ISIS. Because... <laughs> You don't realize, you don't realize when you think you're punching Nazis, you don't realize that you're also punching your cause. Because your opponents, they'll just use every violent incident to discredit your entire movement, and they make it seem like, they make it seem like in a world where white supremacists have a friend in the White House, the real problem is you guys. America is waking up to the menace of Antifa. A dangerous, violent group. The ultimate irony of this movement, which styles itself as anti-fascist, is it is itself fascistic. They are people who are getting off on destroying other people's property. I, I think they're total thugs. Radical, leftist, Antifa thugs. We should also urge everyone to consider uh, pressing this idea of declaring Antifa a terrorist organization. They've got clubs and they've got everything. Antifa! Antifa! <laughs> Antifa! He pronounces it like he's introducing them at the Latin Grammys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hombres good and bad, <laughs> please make some noise for Antifa!